Let's look at the tuck part of the step in a little bit more detail. We have the turn that brings the heel down and then the tuck is what's going to change the weight. So that tuck is using my lower abs to rotate the pelvis, essentially rotating the pelvis back. That's a posterior tilt of the pelvis being caused by my lower ab rotation. And that pulls the body forward. It naturally flexes that forward knee. As I turn the heel lands, as I tuck the pelvis, the knee naturally flexes. And then I can step forward. When I begin the step, my lower abs are engaged on my left side. I place the heel and then I engage the lower abs on the right and disengage them from the left, which allows me to step forward. I flow from lower ab rotation on the left to the right, to the right to the left, left to the right. That rotation of the lower abs tucks the pelvis and engages that new standing leg on the ground. That has to be incorporated with the rotation from the upper torso that brings the foot down and gives forward energy on this side now. As I then tuck and then I lift forward. I mentioned in the first flow motion video that there is a difference between leading with your rib cage and leading with your shoulders. When I say leading with your shoulders, I'm talking about your scapula or your upper back muscles pulling back or pulling back. That's not how we move functionally. We move functionally by rotating forward and that comes from the abdominal muscles. And that's because your abdominal muscles control flexion of the spine. So there's a natural forward movement from the abdominal muscles. Your upper back muscles control extension of the spine, so they're gonna to contribute to backward energy. When we're trying to walk forward, we need that forward energy, and that forward energy is on the side of the standing leg. I have forward energy on my left side right now. In order to bring this foot down, I engage that forward energy on the right and that forward energy continues to shift me forward, coupled with the tucking and lifting action from the lower abs and then the hip to get the body to move forward. And then when I finish the step, I engage that forward energy on the other side to move my left side forward, and then the right side forward, and then the left side forward. In a previous video, I actually talked about walking backwards. And when we walk backwards, we're actually engaging the rotation on the opposite side, meaning my right side with my left standing leg to move backwards. This is how a mime would walk against the wind, looking like they're moving forwards because I'm not moving backwards by pulling back with my shoulder blades. I'm just moving forward on the opposite side. So when I change weight to my right leg, now I'm gonna step back by turning forward on the left, which by definition, since it's a circle we're making, it creates a relative back motion on the right. But that's not because I pulled back on the right. It's just because I stopped moving forward on the right, which makes a relative back motion. And that's how I can walk backwards. So that's backwards. That's forwards. That's backwards. That's forwards. Forward on the side of my standing leg forward on the side of the swing leg to move backwards. Practice that and I think you'll get a better understanding of how your core works. And if I want to go forward, now I go forward continuously on the side of the standing leg. And your tucking of the pelvis determines what side that standing leg is on. When I tuck my right side, my right leg becomes the standing leg. When I tuck my left side, the left leg becomes the standing leg. Coordinate upper torso, lower torso, and hip action, and you've got flow motion.